I wanted to take a moment to talk about where we stand as a state with respect to vaccines and vaccination. So I think we all know and can all sense a vaccine for this pandemic can't come soon enough. Right now at the Maine CDC, at the, across the state of Maine, our plan focuses on vaccinating Maine's most vulnerable people, as well as the essential workers who care for them. Specifically, within the first few weeks of any vaccine being released, we are focused on distributing and vaccinating healthcare providers and hospitals, providers who work in, say, nursing homes, residents of those nursing, nursing homes, as well as our first responders, such as EMS clinicians. That's a broad group. Even within those groups, we are focusing first on healthcare workers with the highest risk of exposure to COVID-19. We don't know when a vaccine may be authorized, if a vaccine is authorized this week, but if one is authorized, we have been, we have been told that a vaccine may possibly be arriving to Maine in the days thereafter. Maine CDC has been preparing for months upon months for this day to come. For me, it's a bit like a relay race. We are ready to have Operation Warp Speed and the federal government pass the baton over to us. But as with any relay race, we've got to start running even before the baton lands in our hand. And that's what we've been doing for months now. But what I really want to talk about today is to set the table to provide a big picture overview of what the promise of a vaccine holds and how we in Maine can set ourselves up for maximal success across all communities in our state. Let's talk first about what a vaccine will mean for the course of the pandemic. I think we all have this hope that the arrival of a vaccine will quickly bring an end to the pandemic, that the pandemic will go out the way that it came with a resounding bang. I'm sorry to say that won't happen. The end of an outbreak, the end of a pandemic is not like a switch being turned off. It's not like a fairy tale ending. We all wish that this vaccine would bring things to a quick and rapid close. But unfortunately, pandemics don't really end that way. Even after a critical threshold of people are vaccinated, sadly, and the scientific reality is there will still be cases of COVID. That's because what a vaccine does is slows the rate of transmission through a population. Let me give you an example. Right now in Maine, for every 100 people who have COVID, they give the virus to, on average, more than one person. That's how outbreaks happen. So for example, for every 100 new cases of COVID on day one, those 100 people give it to, on average, more than one person. So we have about 110 cases of COVID a few days later, new cases. The way a vaccine works is to reduce that transmission rate, to bring the number of people that each new case gives COVID to, to hopefully below one. But even in that world, it still means, for example, that for every 100 new cases, there still might be 70 or 80 new cases that they've given it to a few days later. Let me put that in perspective. Right now, the pandemic across the country and across Maine is like a speeding train. And by the time the brakeman pulls the brake on the train, the train will still go for miles before it starts coming to a safe speed, let alone stop. It will be the same way with the pandemic. The reason I'm telling you this today is to emphasize that the good public health habits that we all have now may be things we need to keep with us for some time. Things like social distancing, physical distancing, as we like to call it, wearing a mask. Those good habits will not disappear even after a vaccine starts arriving. They will still be just as important. Indeed, as I will talk about in just a moment, 
they may be even more important. The other reason I'm telling you this is that it's important for all of us to be realistic about what a vaccine can do, and more importantly, when it can do that. Even after we start vaccinating, the most vulnerable people in Maine, as well as those who care for them, which could start in a matter of days, if not a, if not a week or two, most of us won't see an immediate change, including me. That's why keeping up those public health measures that we've now grown accustomed to are so important. Now, there's a second thing that I wanna talk about today. And that relates to how we in Maine can set ourselves up for maximal vaccine success. The bottom line here is that where you start with COVID determines how effective a vaccine will be. According to some recent research, the, any COVID vaccine will be much less effective at preventing death or illness if the vaccine is introduced into a population where the virus is already raging, which sadly is the case in many parts of our country. To put that differently, a, ma a vaccine for COVID is maximally effective when it is introduced into a community where the virus is better controlled. Where you end up depends on where you start. Going back to our speeding train, the vaccine acts like that brake. But if the train is already speeding down the tracks way too fast, that brake has much, much more work to do in order to be effective. What we can do now to set ourselves up for maximal vaccine success in Maine is to slow that train down as much as possible so that on the day, the week, the month that vaccines start being distributed, first to vulnerable folks and then thereafter, the slower, we, the slower that train is, the time that we pull the brake, the more quickly, the more safely, the more efficiently we will be able to stop it. The vaccine for COVID is the same way. Up until now, I've asked everyone to do their part and to do, their right, do the right thing by wearing face coverings, by maintaining physical distance. Those asks, those recommendations are more important than now as the virus is raging across Maine. And I've asked people to do this to keep themselves safe. I've also asked people to do this to keep other vulnerable members of their community safe, parents, neighbors, those they work with. Today, I'm adding a third reason to do that. The better we get control of the virus today, the more success we will have with the vaccine tomorrow, the next week, and the next month. We all want a return to normal. We all want the economy and our schools to be open. And we all want to protect our family and friends from the pandemic. The bottom line is that the better we do now, the better we will all do later. Our finest medical researchers are clear. If we fail, there will be even worse consequences for our families and our economy. We all have a personal responsibility to slow the spread of the pandemic and eliminate the virus from widespread transmission as quickly as possible. And therefore, it's imperative that starting today, we take an effective fact-based approach by doing the things we've talked about, like wearing face coverings and practicing physical distancing. Let's do what we can do now so that when a vaccine arrives, we are maximally prepared. I'll end with this. Doing these things and getting there will involve doing hard things. Doing hard things right now means potentially changing the way that we gather socially for our winter holidays. It may mean delaying a family gathering or putting into place a virtual gathering or phone calls. Those are undoubtedly hard things. Let's acknowledge that. Denying ourselves the comfort of gathering with our friends and family that comes so traditionally with the holidays. 
And if we don't do these things now, ourselves, our family members, our communities, and the success we may have with vaccination are all at stake. If we don't want darker days after the holiday, we all, I'm asking everyone to do things today that will set us up to, for success because what we do today impacts and predicts the success that we will have going forward starting tomorrow.